I reached a rating of 2000 in online rapid games after only two years of knowing how to play chess. And one thing I found crucial to my rapid rating gain was setting up a study schedule. In this video, we're going to go through my study schedules through the ages from my time as a beginner all the way up to where I am today. And hopefully this gives you some ideas that you can implement into your own study time. So when I first started playing chess for about the first year after I learned how the pieces moved, I didn't really have a set study plan. This was because I didn't have a specific goal in mind and that's totally okay. Chess was really just fun for me. And so in terms of improvement, I would spend about 80% of my dedicated chess time to playing games and then briefly analyzing them afterwards. And then the other 20% I would dedicate to learning openings and like watching more educational videos. At this level, it does not take a lot of time to analyze your own games because you're really still just learning the basics and your mistakes are usually pretty decisive. It's a lot of times one move blunders or falling for things like forks or skewers, just really base level tactics that you can quickly go through and make sure you realize what you did wrong and that you try to remember to avoid those kinds of things in the future. I also really enjoyed studying openings at this level, just even at a base level, learning the first like, you know, five, six, seven, eight moves, a lot of times leading to some kind of a trap, but it really just helped me get into the game, get a little bit more comfortable with where my pieces should be at the beginning of the game, and then, you know, chaos ensued from there. One thing I wish I would have done a little bit more at this level was chess puzzles. You're still sort of getting to know the different patterns that you'll see over the course of a game, and being able to sit for a while with a position where you know that there's a tactic, but you're not quite sure what it is, training yourself to always look for checks, captures, and threats, I think is really good for beginner players, and that's something I wish I would have incorporated a little bit earlier in my chess training. So when I first started attending a weekly chess club and playing in some monthly tournaments, I realized that if I was going to be considering myself a more intermediate player, I was going to have to start putting in a lot more time and dedicate myself to a specific study plan. So shortly after I graduated college, I realized that I didn't have homework anymore, and so I would have about three hours every night to spend working on my chess. So at this vague early intermediate level, I became my own coach and sat down and wrote out a study plan for myself. Obviously, there has to be a little bit of flexibility in plans like this, especially if you like want to have a social life, but this is the plan I came up with during that time. So first of all, I dedicated one hour just to doing chess puzzles. Now, there are two kinds of chess puzzles in my mind. The first kind train your intuition, your pattern recognition. So for this, I would do three minute puzzle rush, just half an hour straight, do a bunch of those easy puzzles, really drill them in so that I could recognize those tactical patterns when they appeared on the board as quickly as possible. The second kind are puzzles that train your long-term calculation skills. So a lot of times these are harder puzzles that you have to sit with for a few minutes to find the solution. And they're puzzles that are meant to really challenge you. So I would specifically choose um, the boxes that were things that I was struggling with in my game. So for example, in endgames, you know, I would go through and click on all the boxes that pertain to pawn endgames, rook endgames, um, just to practice those specifically. And so that helped train, again, my calculation skills. So after I finished my puzzle hour, I would then spend the next hour just playing and analyzing games. So I wouldn't play anything faster than a 10 minute rapid game because that's the specific time control I was working on. And after every single game, I would go back through and I would quickly analyze my mistakes, not taking too long because the games themselves aren't that long, but at least making sure I learned something from every single game. As a side note, obviously I was still playing Blitz and Bullet games because who doesn't? Uh, but I didn't consider that as a part of my dedicated study time. That was outside of the three hours, and I sort of lumped that into the same category as like watching entertaining chess videos. So my final hour was spent as sort of a wildcard hour. So for about four days out of the week, I would study openings, and I would alternate every other day studying my white repertoire and then my black repertoire, and I even got so specific as to say, okay, like on Monday, I'm going to study, say, all the C5 lines in the London and just review everything that I know, expand my repertoire as needed based on games that I played throughout the week, things like that. I specifically like using a physical board to study openings. First of all, because I think uh, tactile learning is really helpful, actually physically moving the pieces really ingrains the lines in your memory. If you force yourself to do it, say, like three times going through like an eight move line or something like that, and then having to reset the pieces every single time, um, I think that really helps with like memorization and learning that way. 
because I learned how to play chess online, I was having a really hard time for a while actually being able to visualize things on the physical board in the same way I could when I was using a computer screen. And I think people who learn how to play over the board a lot of times have the opposite problem where it's harder to visualize on the screen. But using that physical board every day helped me overcome that problem a little bit faster. So another day out of that week, that hour was really miscellaneous. For a while I was studying master games during that time. Um, sometimes I would go specifically into like theoretical end games. Um, other times I would use it as a catch up day. If I had missed a day earlier in the week, I would go through the opening that I had missed for that day. Just really whatever I wanted to do during that hour. Then at the end of the week, that hour was dedicated to going through all of my rapid games through the week, all the ones I had lost, and putting them into a document called Why I'm Losing. You can learn more about that process in this video. So my last day of the week was spent entirely playing over the board games, either at club or at a tournament. And I think this was probably the most beneficial thing for my chess long term because it's really just great to be able to talk with other people about chess and have sort of these casual coaches and training partners to just all collectively help each other improve as we talk through our games afterwards or just to have fun and, you know, play some fun blitz games together. So obviously not everybody can spend three hours a day playing chess. I'm totally aware that people have like other responsibilities, other hobbies, and frankly, I'm sure a lot of people don't want to be spending three hours a day on their chess. But if you're looking to set up a study schedule for yourself, I would totally recommend splitting whatever time you do have into these three different sections. First of all, doing some kind of puzzles training and then playing and analyzing your games, I would really emphasize that over everything else. And then finally, some kind of miscellaneous hour where you can spend on doing openings or end games or whatever you happen to be struggling with uh, in your chess. So that leads us to what exactly does my study plan look like today? Honestly, a lot of it is quite similar. I just shift things based on what I know I need to work on at any given time. So for example, this past weekend, I played in my first classical tournament in a really long time. And so I wanted to really have my openings down pat, so I spent a lot of time studying really deep into lines and doing a lot of memorization in preparation for the strong players I knew I was going to be facing. At this point, I still do a lot of puzzles every single day just to keep my tactical vision really sharp. And so I'll do a three minute puzzle rush and I set a goal for myself that I want to get this high score three times uh, before I move into the rest of my study time. So right now I'm aiming to get 30, three times in three minute puzzle rush, and then I'm able to move on. And sometimes that takes, you know, 20 minutes and sometimes it takes the full hour. I'm still aiming to play at least one rapid game a day, but I've also been trying to increase my blitz and bullet ratings. So that obviously has taken a little bit of my time. And then that wildcard hour has gotten a little bit longer for me. I've been using my physical board specifically to go through some different books and practice my long-term calculation skills as well as continuing to expand and solidify my opening repertoire. I hope this gives you some ideas that you can implement into your own chess study. Feel free to share more ideas in the comments and don't forget to subscribe, it helps me out a lot. I'll see you soon.